As the 70s came to an end, the American appetite for television was stronger than ever, and sitcoms were a hearty staple of the American TV diet. Unlike today, back in 79, there were only three major television networks fighting for viewership, CBS, ABC, and NBC. ABC was king of the hill with the powerhouse comedy lineup featuring hits like Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley, both are Happy Day spinoffs by the way, and Three's Company. CBS was riding high on the legendary MASH, and NBC was in dead last with barely anything. NBC was doing really bad. Like I mean really bad. Like they needed something to save the company from going bankrupt kind of bad. Executives at NBC realized the other networks were dominating with schedules filled with comedy. The only successful comedy sitcom NBC had was Norman Lear's Different Strokes starring the legendary Gary Coleman. Along with creating Different Strokes, Norman Lear was the mastermind behind a string of comedy hits, including All in the Family, One Day at a Time, and The Jeffersons. When NBC decided they needed a hit comedy, naturally, they went straight to Norman and Lear. Lear wanted to make a female version of Welcome Back Cotter, which at the time was nearing its end. However, in its first two seasons, it was wildly popular even selling out merchandise. This female Welcome Back Cotter show prototype would eventually become the legendary sitcom of the 80s, The Facts of Life. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please like this video if you enjoy it and tell us what video you'd like to see us make next. We read every comment. Okay, let's go. Because The Facts of Life became so popular in its own right, many people forget it was actually a spinoff of different strokes. Charlotte Ray, aka Miss Edna Garrett, was the Drummond family housekeeper and unexpectedly proved herself to be a show stealer. She's actually the first character the audience meets in the very first episode. The location The Facts of Life takes place at, Eastland School in Peekskill, New York, is the same school Dana Plato's character Kimberly from Different Strokes attends, although she never appears in an episode. Lear knew he wanted Charlotte Ray to lead this new show, but it wasn't that easy. Ray called Norman Lear crying hysterically because she couldn't get out of a contract she had at CBS to do the show. The crying was short-lived as Lear assured her CBS owed him a few favors and he would take care of it. Needless to say, yeah, that contract wasn't a problem. Whoever Norman Lear wants, Norman Lear gets, and we all win for it. Miss Charlotte Ray! <laughs> Mrs. Garrett! Mrs. Garrett! Because who else could be Miss Garrett? Charlotte Ray ended up signing a sweet deal that allowed her to go back to work on different strokes if the facts of life didn't work out. This deal was actually worked into the storyline of the very first episode. Both Mr. Drummond and Miss Garrett talk about how temporary this new arrangement might be, showing NBC's real confidence in the show. Not very much, huh? With Charlotte Ray cast, it was now time for the girls. None of the girls had that much experience in the biz, but Mindy Cohn, who would go on to play Natalie, had never acted a day in her life. Mindy was discovered while the producers were visiting private schools and interviewing real students as part of their research for making the show. One of the many school children they talked to, Mindy stuck out. In fact, Mindy made such an impression on the crew that they wrote a role for her. When the principal of Mindy's school called her into his office to break the good news, she remembers just being relieved that she wasn't in trouble. There is no possible way that 13-year-old Mindy Cohn could imagine what was really in store for her. I wish my principal called me into his office to offer me roles in legendary sitcoms. I'll take happy days, please. The only reason I ever got called into the principal's office was... Well, let's not get into that. You may have forgotten, but the future 80s icon Molly Ringwald was actually in the first season of The Facts of Life. The media pays nauseating amounts of money to the stars they think will get the audience excited. Actually, you probably forgot the first season entirely, because the first season is not really the facts of life we all love and remember. Originally, there were seven girls and two other administrators from the school featured in the show. That's 11 main characters. To be completely honest, the first season was pretty much a disaster. Critics trashed it, and it finished a grand stinking 74th in the ratings. But NBC literally couldn't afford another failure. They didn't have enough money for a brand new show, so they had to make do with what they had. Well, kind of. They actually wanted to make do with less. For the second season, more than half the cast would get the chop. After the disastrous first season, they hired all new writers, and in a historical first, all the writers were women. The producers wanted the characters to be more everyday authentic, and the new writers agreed. It was impossible for the kind of character development that NBC wanted with 11 main characters. Somebody or somebody's had got to go. 
Only three girls remained after the chop, Blair, Natalie, and Tootie. But something still was missing. They needed an edge. So enters Nancy McKeon, AKA Joe, the badass with a heart of gold and the perfect foil to Lisa Welchel as the prissy, superficial, and condescending Blair. For her to help me with that name. <laughs> it's Polnicek. You, and I got your interpreter right here. Interestingly enough, Blair was actually the opposite of her character in real life. She hated wearing makeup and even taking showers. I don't believe it. What? There's a hair in my menu. But that's okay. It's just acting. It's not real life. You can be whoever you want to be behind the scenes, right? Well, when you're hired to be the extremely vain girl everyone loves to hate, well, how do I put this? Blair's weight became a huge problem on the show. They hired nutritionists, encouraged her to exercise, and got rid of all the junk food on the set. And eventually the producers would walk into her dressing room every morning with a scale, all to try to get her to lose weight. But nothing really worked. You can't force a diet on somebody who doesn't want it. You'd have to keep them under surveillance 24 seven and that's just not really possible. Actually, all of the girls' weights fluctuated throughout the lifespan of the show, which was fodder for the late night circuit. Joan Rivers made a joke about this that would be a hard one to shake for the show. Joan referred to the show as the fats of life. Pretty harsh. Are not people that help friends that diet. That's you must right. tell a friend the truth. You must say you are still a pig. Lose more weight. That's a friend. The redesign for the second season is what many fans consider the real facts of life, and the show immediately saw a huge rating increase. By the third season, The Facts of Life was the number one comedy on NBC and the number two show overall, outperforming the predecessor, Different Strokes. The student becomes the master. Although it didn't solve all of NBC's problems, it was the shot in the arm they desperately needed. The show was a reliable ratings workhorse that went on to become one of the longest running sitcoms of all time, airing new episodes from 1979 to 1988. But many of those years were not spent here at Eastville. After Blair and Joe graduated in the finale of season four, this required major changes to the show. In the hour long season five premiere, Brave New World, Mrs. Garrett opens up her own business called Edna's Edibles. All four girls would live and work with Miss Garrett in the new store, and this is where most of the show would now take place. However, in season seven, the store was burnt down and the girls had to rebuild the store, which now has a pop culture theme to it. Once once again changing up the set, and that's not all that changed. A new cast member would also be introduced to shake things up. Enter the now legendary George Clooney. Hi. Hi. May I help you? Who back then was pretty much a nobody. He was just a guy who would come hang out. It was kind of weird, actually. Even cast members joked about how strange it was for a grown man to be coming by for no reason just to hang out with some teenage girls. On most episodes, there was no clear reason why he entered the scene. Hi. George! Yeah, just stop by to see how everything turned out. But despite all of these changes, the facts were that the show continued to perform well in the ratings. So the show goes on. In the heavily promoted hour premiere of season eight, after having a reduced role for two seasons, Mrs. Garrett finally leaves the show altogether. In the episode, Mrs. Garrett goes off to join the Peace Corps and convinces her sister, played by Cloris Leachman, to take over the business. Charlotte Ray simply felt that she had done all she could with the character of Mrs. Garrett, and she wanted to move on. And so I did a crazy thing because everyone said, Stay and get every nickel. And even without Mrs. Garrett, the show was still pulling numbers. And the show was renewed for a ninth season, solidifying the facts of life as one of the longest running sitcoms of all time and firmly cementing its place in television history. And quite remarkably, the ninth season contains the highest rated episode of all time. For a ratings boost, the producers wanted to make a controversial episode where Blair is the first of the four girls to lose her virginity. But based on her Christian faith, actress Lisa Welchel refused to do the episode. She asked to be written out of the episode entirely, and it's the only episode that Blair is not in. Instead, Natalie is the one that loses her virginity. With some of the best ratings the show ever enjoyed, NBC was happily making plans for a season 10, but sadly, it would never happen because Mindy Cohn, AKA Natalie, and Nancy McKeon, AKA Joe, both refused to do the show anymore. They simply wanted to move on. What is unique about the facts of life is that behind the scenes, everybody really did get along and the four girls are close friends to this day. 
Okay, no one expected the facts of life to go on for as long as it did, not even the people working on the show. Even after all the changes made throughout the years, the show was still going strong ratings-wise, consistently winning in its time slot. Very few shows are cancelled even though they are doing well. Very few shows run for nine years straight with audiences still wanting more. The Facts of Life is kind of an under-the-radar smash. Even though it was a comedic show, it had substance. The show tackled a variety of serious issues fearlessly. Despite its stellar performance with audiences, not only during its original airing, but also in syndication long after the show was cancelled, The Facts of Life is often overlooked in respect to the greatest shows of all time. Why do you think that is? No, I'm asking you. Let us know in the comments. And also, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss a single video we come out with. We're making more every day. From all of us at Do You Remember, thanks for watching. Those are the facts.